We will see in this video about the femoral artery in detail and the anastomosis it participates with its neighboring arteries. Coming to the anastomosis, trochanteric anastomosis. This is the main anastomosis which the branches of which it provides blood supply to the head of the femur. And this lies in the trochanteric fossa. This is the trochanteric fossa. Just medial to the greater trochanter. This part is the trochanteric fossa. That is the reason the name is given as trochanteric anastomosis. And this trochanteric anastomosis provides a link of connection between the internal iliac and the external iliac arteries which in turn is continued as femoral artery. Now this anastomosis is formed by the descending branch of the superior gluteal and a branch from the inferior gluteal and the ascending branches of both lateral circumflex femoral and the medial circumflex femoral. All these they anastomose here in the trochanteric fossa to form trochanteric anastomosis. So this is the trochanteric anastomosis in this diagrammatic representation. You can see this is the common iliac. The external iliac continuing as femoral. This is the internal iliac. So from the internal iliac are the branches, the superior gluteal and the inferior gluteal. From the femoral, this is the profunda femoris artery, which is a largest branch. From the profunda femoris are the branches, the lateral and the medial circumflex femoral arteries. Now this trochanteric anastomosis is formed by the ascending branches of both lateral and medial circumflex femoral arteries, a descending branch from the superior gluteal and a branch from the inferior gluteal artery. So these branches from the anastomosis pass along the neck of the femur as reticular fibers along with the reticular fibers of the capsule to supply the head and neck of the femur. So why is this trochanteric anastomosis important? As we have been saying that it is the main purpose to maintain blood supply to the head of the femur. In healthy people, most of the femoral head is supplied by medial circumflex femoral artery. But there is a contribution from the lateral circumflex femoral artery also. But if there is any occlusion to the medial femoral circumflex artery, the superior and the inferior gluteal arteries can compensate the supply to the head of the femur via the trochanteric anastomosis. Am I clear? I repeat again, the trochanteric anastomosis provides the connection between the internal iliac and external iliac arteries and the trochanteric anastomosis is formed by the ascending branches of medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries, a descending branch of the superior gluteal artery and a branch from inferior gluteal artery. Now let us see the cruciate anastomosis. This is the cruciate anastomosis. This also provides the connection between the internal iliac and the external iliac arteries. It is located at the level of lesser trochanter here. Here. This is the greater trochanter. This is the lesser trochanter. Here. Since this anastomosis is in a cruciform shape, that is a plus shape, the name is given so. So this is formed by the transverse branches 
of medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries and the descending branch of the inferior gluteal artery and an ascending branch of the first perforating artery of which the inferior gluteal artery is a branch from internal iliac artery and the rest of the three branches which are the branches of profunda femoris artery in turn is a branch of the femoral artery in turn is a continuation of external iliac artery so that's how it is forming a connection between the external and internal iliac arteries so here if we see in the diagrammatic representation the cruciate anastomosis the horizontal limb of the cruciate anastomosis is formed by the transverse branches of both the lateral and medial circumflex femoral arteries and the vertical limb is formed by the descending branch of the inferior gluteal and the ascending branch of the first perforating artery so why this cruciate anastomosis is important if there is any blockage between the femoral artery and the external iliac artery here so there is no flow lower down that is through the profunda femoris and through the lateral and medial circumflex femoral arteries isn't it so how the blood to reach the popliteal artery to supply the lower limb now that root of the blood here it flows via the internal iliac then inferior gluteal then the descending branch of the inferior gluteal then the lateral circumflex femoral artery then this is the lateral circumflex isn't it so this is the descending branch ascending and the transverse branch and then it descends down via the descending branch of the lateral circumflex and then as this is anastomosing with the superior lateral genicular artery then via that it in turn is connected to the popliteal artery because the superior lateral genicular artery is a branch from the popliteal artery is that clear so i again repeat the route the alternate route of the blood flow when there is a blockage between the external iliac artery and the femoral artery then the blood flows via the internal iliac artery the inferior gluteal artery the descending branch of the inferior gluteal artery then the transverse branch of the lateral circumflex iliac artery then the descending branch of the lateral circumflex iliac artery then with the lateral superior genicular artery then to the popliteal artery so that's how the collateral circulation is maintained via the cruciate anastomosis now about the longitudinal arterial anastomosis at the back of the thigh this is the longitudinal arterial anastomosis this is the posterior aspect this is the anterior aspect so this is the femoral artery the biggest branch is the profunda femoris artery these are 1 2 3 and 4 perforating arteries they pierce the adductor magnus and then go at the back dividing into ascending and descending arteries which are anastomosing here okay so this is all is the longitudinal arterial anastomosis so this longitudinal anastomosis is close to the posterior aspect of the insertion of the adductor magnus along the linea aspera now as these uh, 
perforating arteries, they perforate from the anterior aspect of the erector magnus, appear on the posterior surface close to its insertion. They divide into ascending and descending arteries and ascending and descending arteries continuously they anastomose with one another. So the first perforating artery, the ascending branch of the first perforating artery, it participates in the cruciate anastomosis. And the descending branch of the fourth perforating artery will anastomose with the superior muscular branch of the popliteal artery, thus having formed a continuous longitudinal anastomosis which forms the main supply to the hamstring muscles. Now coming to the surface marking of the femoral artery. The surface marking of the femoral artery is done when the thigh is slightly flexed and abducted and laterally rotated so that we see the anteromedial aspect of the thigh in which a line is drawn from the mid inguinal point to the adductor tubercle. Then the upper two thirds of the imaginary line represents the femoral artery. The lower one third it represents the popliteal artery. Okay, so this is what is the surface marking of the femoral artery. Coming to the clinical significance. So the femoral artery can be used for compression when there is bleeding beyond the inguinal ligament. The femoral artery can be compressed against the femoral head at the mid inguinal point to control the bleeding of the distal limb. Palpation, that is to see the pulsations of the femoral artery, they are felt in the femoral triangle just below the mid inguinal point. And cannulation. So this is how the cannulation can be done via the femoral artery which is superficial in the femoral triangle. It is a preferred artery for uh, the injecting dyes or sending any cannulas for angiography. So the cannula is inserted through the femoral artery via the external iliac, the common iliac and then into the abdominal iota, the thoracic iota, the arch of iota and then into the heart. So from there it can even send through the coronary arteries for coronary angiography and angioplasty. And this femoral artery is also used for embalming purposes. When a dead body is received, the dead body is has to be embalmed with formalin to preserve the tissues of the body to near normal. So the embalming is done via the femoral artery only also along with the carotids at time here. So, but right now, as we are concerned with femoral, the embalming is done using the femoral arteries. Yeah. This is the avascular necrosis of the head of the femur, which can be due to the fracture that can happen at the neck of the femur, where this arterial ring, which is formed by the medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries is injured through which this retinacular branches which enter into the capsule to supply the neck and head of the femur they get compromised 
causing the avascular necrosis of head of the femur wherein the head of the femur has to be replaced by the prosthesis that is called as the partial replacement of the hip joint this is another important thing to be known as the blockages the occlusion of the femoral artery and the successive branches of it in the lower limb so this is how the normal flow will be there if there is any plaque that is been formed the blood flow will be decreased and as in when the blood flow is decreased and when the plaque is in increase there won't be any blood flow to that region where the muscle here gets damaged to overcome this aspect a stent with balloon angioplasty will be sent and inflated at the plaque so that it increases the diameter of the blood vessel and the stent is left in place and the balloon is withdrawn so that the diameter is maintained this is one way of treating this uh, um, obliterated arteries occluded arteries another open procedure is that the saphenous vein is you can see it here they can take the part of the saphenous vein and and the saphenous vein is reversed and is grafted above and below the blocked vein it is reversed because you all know by now that the saphenous vein is full of the valves so for the flow here from the artery to the artery the valves should not be there that is the reason the saphenous vein is reversed when it is bypassed here so it is attached proximally and distally to the block vessel as this great saphenous vein is very much accessible to the femoral artery in the leg so this is the most preferred way that is used for the graft here and there is another feature which is called as pseudo aneurysm of the femoral artery aneurysm means it is the bulging of the walls of the femoral artery here wherein all the walls they bulge in the aneurysm whereas in pseudo aneurysm it is only the adventitia that is bulged the media and intima do not extend into this bulge so that is how it is represented this is the groin region where you can see the uh, bulge of the artery here and it is little infected also here where there is a little bit of ooze so this can be treated since all the walls of the artery are not involved in this bulge it is called as pseudo aneurysm pseudo means false so it's a false aneurysm so this can be treated by compression under ultrasound where this is done in few sittings where this feeding tract for this pseudo aneurysm can be obliterated that is one number 2 as thrombin is injected into it so that it will get clotted has to be very careful in doing this procedure always done under the ultrasound guided uh, thing wherein the stem the track has to be literally very very narrow to be done this and another procedure is after having the stent put in here another catheter is been passed through which the whole of the pseudo aneurysm is filled with coils so that there won't be blood that is entering into the pseudo aneurysm and the aneurysm will not grow much further and will get absorbed and will get cut here so these are the few procedures that are followed to treat the pseudo aneurysm so have a good day all of you thank you